Okay, so um, when to use a hose and when to use tubing. As you would imagine, uh, hose is used on dynamic applications. And uh, if there's a vibration issue, then a hose would be used. Routing from a port or tube is easily accomplished with a tube. Um, corrosive environments and smaller batch sizes are much easier to make a hose assembly than make a tube assembly. And when to use the tubing? Um, normally we use tubing where you have tight routing spaces. Um, you can make the machine uh, you're working on look a lot neater and tidier. Also where it's you've got difficult access, so where you can't get spanners in to tighten parts up, etc. Uh, long routings, um, you use less clamps really with, than you do with hose. So uh, if you're going from one end of the chassis to another, um, where there's higher temperature or abrasion. And the targeted applications for both of the hose and the tube are more or less the same really. Um, they, they both can be used on fuel, hydraulics, coolant, uh, etc. So the basic redu uh, rules reducing complexity and cost. So understand the pressure requirement of the system so we can select the right tube. Um, quite often um, people will oversize the tube. So that's one of the first things we look for is have you got the right tube for the right application. Then try to keep the bends at 90 degrees or less. This makes the bending operation quicker as most of the bending is done on automatic machinery. Maximize the distance between the bends. Again, this is for the automation side. Try to maintain the standard bend radiuses so you've got one bend radius throughout the length of the tube. We can do more, we can do up to eight, but again, this just incurs cost because it slows the production down. Maintain the standard tolerances for bending. Uh, this is means don't make the tolerances too tight, in which case it's very hard to achieve, it takes much longer to set the machinery, etc. Avoid the, the uh, use of special end fittings. So try to use just standard fittings and use a reducer on the hose instead of um, creating a custom fitting for the tube. Consider hose tube combinations in, the, in tight assemblies to reduce the number of components. So these are our standard manufacturing tolerances. So on a straight tube we have plus or minus 1.5 millimeter and then a bent assembly over one meter we have plus or minus three millimeter and brackets and hole locations 1.5 and angular one degree so the tubes that we produce in europe are all made in a place called carvina in the czech republic which is right on the um, polish border so we have on average 350 associates and a new tube cell was installed in 2012. i should say that Gates has been producing tubes uh, for many, many years now, since the 1980s um, in the UK, and then was transferred to um, Spain back in the late 90s. So we have a long experience with um, tubing, and we have many tube uh, manufacturing locations throughout the world. So typical uses for the tubes, um, tractors, uh, the power steering system. And here you see the hydraulics is running from one end of the machine, uh, the tractor to the other. So this is where we were talking about the long tubes. So uh, on on the application there on the tractor that we supply, we actually do a hose tube hose assembly, which connects uh, one front axle to the back rear axle. And the customer had a big problem in uh, assembling the hoses onto the tube uh, before we come up with this um, solution of a hose tube hose. Telehandlers, uh, again, some long tubes on telehandlers, as you can imagine, running up the boom. 
again, it takes up less space than a hose. Um, and it's easier to pick. Truck and bus, uh, we're doing more and more now. Truck and bus, mainly fuel lines, urea pipes and coolant pipes. Um, there are some hydraulic lines on the truck where the truck has a hydrostatic optional drive. Excavators, again, you see the banana booms and you'd always see tubes running up those banana booms. Harvesters, so we do um, the hydrostatic drives, braking systems, cooling systems, air pipes, compressor lines, and ride on mowers. So surprising how many uh, tubes, 50 tubes on one of these little um, mowers. But there you are, it makes it look nice and neat. And there's good protection from the stones coming up, etc. using the steel tube. Material handling again, um, hydrostatic drives and hydraulic rams. Wind power, we do more and more of this each year. As, as you know, um, the wind turbine sales are going up, so we do the braking system, the yaw and pitch and lock control systems. Skid steers. Um, this is a very good application for tubing because underneath the cab where you have the engine and the pump, etc., is very limited to space. So um, putting tubes in there makes it look a lot neater. And also our customers are going more and more to host tube assemblies on, on these skid steer applications. And then engines, we do the oil cooling, turbocharged pipes, etc. So the main types of steel that we use, um, we always use cold uh, drawn seamless tube at gates. And there's basically um, two grades, the 235, which is the most common. Uh, this is used for low to medium pressure. And then for hydrostatic lines, we use that E355, which is a higher tensile strength. Um, so you're not having to increase the diameter and thickness of the tube, you change the specification of the tube to a higher um, tensile strength. We also use a lot of uh, seamless stainless steel. Of course, it's got high corrosion resistance and it's also um, can be used for urea, urea pipes and coolants. We use a little bit of aluminium, uh, plastic coated aluminium. And more and more now, especially in truck and bus, we're seeing a product called Zisterplex which is a plastic coated um, E235 material. Again, very good high corrosion resistance. The only um, drawback with it is that the end terminations need to be formed because you obviously can't braze or weld it. And of course we can bend other materials, but these are the most common. So the terminations, uh, sorry. So terminations are basically the same as what you'll find on the hose assemblies. Um, it's a question of how you attach them. And within gates, we have we can even do the end forming, which is the cheapest solution. And the reason this is the cheapest solution is because we can use a pre-plated material, um, which is more cost effective, and you haven't got lengthy um, processes like brazing and TIG welding. But these we can also do where there's no other option. And for male fittings, for example, it will either be TIG welded or it will be brazed. We have, um, yeah, as I say, just the same as the hose assemblies, really. Um, we can do hose beads. Um, so you, where you've got low pressure um, textile braid hose, these can then be clamped onto the tube. We do stub pipes. Um, which is like a T piece coming out of the tube and you're actually using the tube as a manifold, for example. And then we do brackets, um, which are manually welded, TIG or MIG. And then we do our quick connect um, connectors on the end of the tubes, which are welded. So as for the process is the first operation on the tubing uh, manufacturing is cutting the tube. 
So we have an automatic saw um, purchased a couple of years ago. This will cut between eight mil and 40 millimeter diameter. It can cut two different lengths during one cycle, which makes it uh, makes more use of the material and less wastage. So you have one job can come out the front of the machine and another part number come out the back of the machine. Off cuts are automatically dropped into a waste container underneath. So basically the operator just loads the bundle of steel directly from the stores, places it in the back of the machine. The machine then untangles the bundle and feeds it through to the cutting um, head. The speed of the head adjusts itself as it cuts through the tube, which minimizes the uh, burrs created by the cutting. It can also cut from the uh, coil, um, but today we only use it on straight lengths. And, and normally, I should say, the tube normally comes in lengths of six meters, uh, but you can get seven meters as well is quite common. We can, in the future, add on the auto deburr machine and washing units. Um, as and when the production increases, but this machine will cut about 1,200 tubes per hour. So orbital TIG welding, um, we have uh, machines of 70 mil diameter capacity and also 110 millimeter capacity. So we clamp the parts into the welding head, which is um, sealed, and then we cap one end of the tube um, just with a plain cap. And then in the other end, we introduce argon gas. And this creates a positive pressure inside the tube. And it also keeps the inside of the tube clean during the operation. Then the operator just puts, uh, pushes the start button and the electrode will rotate around the circumference of the tube. And we can control every part of that 360 degrees. We control the um, amount of power uh, both on a high pulse and a low pulse. And then the parts are just removed and visually inspected for no signs of cracks, that the welds in the correct place and no porous holes. And then we also check the inside of the tube using a boroscope. So it's a very good uh, clean weld. Um, all we do is check 100% uh, penetration for the complete 360 degrees of the tube. And if we achieve that, we know the part will not fail. And to my knowledge, we've never had a failure in production uh, since we started. Carbine are certified to um, ISO 3834. Another advantage of this process over the brazing is that, as you can see in the photograph, the weld. Um, is very flat, very close to the diameter of the tube. This means we can use slip over nuts where a braze part is the tube is brazed into a socket and that socket then doesn't allow a nut to slip over. So again, it's a, it's a cheaper option than putting a wire on nut, for example. We also do a special flange forming uh, procedure, which can do code 61 and code 62 flanges. Some customers, uh, customers don't allow welding or, or brazing. And for those, we use this solution. So this is just basically a 37 degree flare, which is formed on the end of the tube. And then we have a cone um, with an O-ring, which is uh, inserted inside of the tube. And then when the uh, two mating parts are clamped up, the, the more pressure you apply, the better the seal, basically. So it's a, a simple, simple process. Um, I can't say much more about that. We have rotary end forming machines and they can be used for JIC uh, terminations and um, FFORX. We have a multi hip forming machines, and these are able to do uh, reductions on tube, expansions, uh, beading, uh, and also you yeah, have special, special M forms that we come across now and again. Then we have a FS DIN forming machine. This is basically just 
forming the DIN profile on the end of the tube. And then we have Opticam um, DIN cutting assembly rings. Uh, so this pre assembles the cutting ring, uh, a fail safe manner of attaching the cutting ring. And you can run SPC, etc. If there's a problem, the machine will stop and, and alert you that there is a problem. Then we have two um, mesh belt conveyor furnaces. So this is a cheaper process than um, TIG welding, but it's more expensive than forming. And here we're using a solid copper ring. Um, it goes through the furnace at 1100 degrees in a protective atmosphere. So the parts come out clean. Again, the parts are 100% visually inspected. We never use their copper paste. We only use 99% pure copper rings. The limiting factor of the mesh belt conveyor furnace is the tube lamp. So we would not um, approve of going over one and a half meters in length. Otherwise they tend to come out looking like a banana rather than a straight tube. Uh, for bending, we have um, BLM machines. So they can bend up to 52 millimeter diameter. Uh, these are all electric machines. They can um, they can have up to eight tools, as I was saying earlier. So you can have eight different bend radius if required. And they also are able to do push, push bending and variable radius. Then we have a simple um, hydraulic machines. And these we use for tubes up to 20 millimeter, uh, millimeter diameter. The only advantage really of that, those machines are they're quite fast in operation, um, but they take longer to set. Then we have jig benders for special couplings and measurement arms. So as I say, that we have all electric uh, benders, the large ones, they can do variable radius. So that is like, um, Making a banana boom, you can have a have a long sweeping bend. We use the same for the wind turbines on the brake, um, the brake disc. These are about 1.8 uh, 1.8 meter bend radius. We can do left and right hand bending in the same cycle. It's auto loaded, unloaded. And one of the uh, main advantages is our machine can actually read a, a customer's CAD mod model. So if the customer sends us a model in a step format, this can be downloaded directly into the machine, which will create the bend program. We can also then um, do a simulation of that part being bent. If there's a problem with it, it might hit the floor, for example, or hit the machine itself. We can actually adjust the drawing and program and then send it back to the customer to see if he agrees with the deviations. So this is a, a very useful addition uh, to the software. Machines also directly link with the measuring system. So we, if it's a new job, for example, um, we set up the part, we bend one, we put it onto the measurement system, we measure the part, we then see the errors in, in the coordinates, and it works out a correction program, and this is sent back to the bender machine. So the next one produced is good. So it's a complicated machine, but once the uh, bending machine is set up, because the machine is all electric, then even all the tooling um, is electrically controlled as well. So this ensures that next time when you come to make that job six months later, the first one off is going to be correct. And we can also do um, variable radius bending and normal draw bending in the same cycle because of the two heads. So these are the measurement arms. Um, they range from four meter length to 12 meter length. But if the tube is um, over that for some reason you can stop the program halfway through and move the measuring machine physically and then carry on where you left off 
Uh, we have surface finish measurements for terminations, for um, flares, etc. We can have metal um, checking fixtures for tubes with very, very tight tolerances um, when required. For variable radius, we use uh, composite checking fixtures because um, it, it's much easier to do than trying to measure with a measuring arm. Pressure testing, uh, salt spray testing and cleanliness testing. Then we have um, two now custom built flushing machines. Um, and these have a pulsating turbulence um, system. And what happens here is that the operator will scan the barcode on the shop order and the flushing machine will set the machine to whatever the customer's specification is. The machine starts and it will keep running until it meets that specification. Once it's done that, then the parts are uh, dried by air blast. And there's one or two workstations uh, per machine, depending on the length of the tube. And we can um, achieve cleanliness level to NAS4. Most common uh, way of cleaning tubes is just by using a pellet. So we have uh, manual pellet guns, as you can see in the, in the illustration there. We have automatic pellet machines, which can be programmed to fire one or, one or two pellets or three pellets through one tube. And then um, we use a different type of pellet than what you would use on a hose normally, because we want it to be a bit more aggressive, uh, which you can't do on a hose. So there's various pellets available. Uh, some have like scouring heads on the on the top, uh, as you would find in a kitchen cleaning um, pot scourer. Then if the parts are welded or, or complex plating, we would normally spray the inside with a dewatering oil. And this will give corrosion protection inside the tube up to six months storage uh, without caps or plugs. The oil, the oil dosing um, system is dependent on the internal surface of the area and the oil is compatible with all standard hydraulic oils. Then for capping, we have the standard caps you'd find on hose assemblies, heat shrink caps, uh, plastic net tubing, SAE caps for solid flanges. Um, so whatever you um, require, there's always a solution. Some customers now send us their own containers where the parts are stacked inside the container uh, to prevent damage. So, as I was saying, um, a lot of our customers now are moving to host tube assemblies. And there's obviously the benefits where you've got a reduced um, leak point, uh, reduced number of parts. So um, you're only ordering one part number where you've got difficult routine and poor access. And normally it can be a cheaper solution than a tube and a hose uh, purchased separately. So the possibilities are endless, really. You can uh, here you can see on the top one, you know, we've got a tube and a hose assembly. And uh, what I was talking about before is a uh, stub pipe and there it's called a test port. So you can put in a temperature monitor there, for example, then you can have hose, tube, hose, tube, hose, tube. I think the most complicated one we have done is a tube, hose, tube, hose, tube, hose, tube. Um, that was for a truck, a truck company. So, um, as we say, we were reducing the number of components um, which the customer has to order, reducing the part numbers. We're reducing the uh, assembly time and we're gaining a lower profile normally um, than what you would with a coupling as well. As you can see in the proper, uh, the bottom um, illustration, you've got no nut to tighten there, so you don't need a clearance. This 
more or less what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about skid steers. You can imagine that's the profile of the skid steer from the back. And we can run tubes across that and then connect hoses to come up to the moving parts. And you always should use, if you've got two things that on the machine that are moving uh, or vibrating at different frequencies, then you should always put a hose, as in the hose in with the tubes, as you can see in the bottom uh, illustration there. So if that part on the left is vibrating high, you really do need a hose and you'd never come up there with a tube uh, else the tube would disintegrate. And again, more and more we're seeing a lot of, um, we don't know whether we call these tube assemblies or whether we call them uh, tube couplings, but this is more and more of these because again, the space constrictions around the hydrostatic drives with the garden, uh, guarding, et cetera, um, we're making more of more of these parts where a tube is used for the first um, the first half a meter or so. Um, this particular drive on there that had an adapter in, then it had a ninety degree uh, bend in there. And when the new chassis arrived at this customer, then they would no longer fit into this um, application, so they changed over to the hose tube assemblies. So these can work up to 420 bars. We could go higher, um, but they do spike at 520 bar. And this is, again, an application where you'd use that E355, the higher tensile strength material. Um, turbo oil chargers, low pressure. Uh, these tubes can be beaded. Um, uh, they, it's produced as a kit, as you can see in the uh, photo there. So that would be sent out as one part number to the customer. Quick connect um, here on the photo, you can see the QL, um, QLL, which is the low pressure uh, connection. Uh, this is on a tractor and this is the power steering system. And what the customer does here is he uses our uh, female connector on the bottom tube and he actually plugs in his uh, oil filler into that, fills the system with oil, then takes his filling gun out and just plugs the tube back in um, on the top. Then we have QLD, which is a low to medium pressure. This can be disconnected. Again, this is used, can be used on telehandlers, again, for ease of assembly, uh, where space is a constraint. And then we have QLH. Um, and this, this system is um, unable to disconnect this system. So here you have to use an adapter at some part of the circuit. We also do kitting. Um, as you can see, these parts here, these are for a wind turbine. So these are all clamped together. All the adapters and hoses are fitted, uh, capped and go out to the customer as, as that, as you can see. So for the customer, again, it's reduction of part numbers uh, and it's easier to assemble on the vinyl turbine. We can do, um, as I said, brackets um, and stub pipes. Here's a typical example. Um, so you've got the ends of the tube, they're orbital TIG welded, and then the brackets and the stub pipes have been manually TIG welded. So we get some very complex parts. Um, this one is four tubes welded together. We can do up to eight tubes welded together. Again, but this is all uh, additional cost. Then um, from applications department where I wear, uh, work, and um, we're able to go to the customer sites. We can bend tubing on customer sites up to a certain size, uh, which is 16 mil. We can reverse engineer using our measuring arms, uh, create the bill of material. And then we uh, do training of uh, design engineers for customers and tubability is best practice. Um, we can help the customer design the tube 
to make a cheaper product, a better quality product, um, and maybe think of some ideas that he would not be aware of. Um, the example in the uh, picture there is a large concrete pump which had 127 tube assemblies on, and as you can see, they were around six to seven meters long each tube. There's another application worked on last year. Uh, this is a lorry trailer where it's got a hydraulically raisable deck inside, which is in three sections. So this circuit uh, lifts the deck up and down. And these, these tubes were 10 meters long, so they had to be connected in the middle. Then we have um, German and UK based design engineers ourselves to create drawings. Um, come up with uh, new designs, uh, new terminations, and um, we can design the brackets. And uh, then we have a big database, which you would have access to as well, of standard termination and hose stems uh, to assist you in your design. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, have a nice Easter. Thank you.